So in our previous video, we were able to add roles to a user and then display them back on the admin users list page. So, so far in the application, we haven't actually put anywhere in place a way to monitor what users are logged in and then see whether they have access to certain parts of the application. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So there are a large number of ways that you can do it. There's uh, already a load of packages out there for Laravel that you could leverage and use, but we're going to use a mixture of gates and policies. So gates and policies are built into Laravel and in your application, you can make the decision yourself what you want to use. So you can use one or the other, or you can use a mixture of both. So in this video, we're just going to concentrate on gates alone. So the first thing we need to do is create some methods to check whether a user has a certain role or not. So let's open up our user model under app user. This is where we're going to create our method to check whether the user has a certain role or not. So let's just create a new method and it's going to be a public function. I'm going to call this has any roles. And I'm going to pass in an array of the roles I want to check. So I'm going to do an if here and I'm going to say if this user and this is referencing this current user model. So the current logged in user. And then we're going to call our roles relationship that we've defined above here belongs to many at roles. And we're going to say, so this uses roles. And there's a method on Eloquent called where in. And what this allows us to do is pass an array of values in and check whether it's in with a given column on the database table. So what we can say is where in the name column on the roles table, do any of the given roles match? So we're saying this current user, check their roles relationship, and are there any roles in the name column? So we're just checking the relationship for this current user and seeing whether they have the given roles. And then we could just get the first one. So if we give an array of roles in and the first one matches, there's no point checking the other ones. And if there is a match, we're just gonna return true. And then outside of the if block, if there is no match, we'll just return false. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate this function. And I'm just going to name this one has role. I'm doing this so I can just pass a string in, a single role. So we could say has role admin instead of saying, do they have the role admin or author or user? So there's a little change we need to make to here. Obviously, I'm taking the S off roles here. So it's just role. And where in is expect an array, but we're not going to be passing an array, we're just going to be passing a string. So we just need to get rid of that in. And so it's where. So like above, this is just checking the current logged in user, checking the roles relationship, and seeing does the given role exist on the name column in the relationship? And if it does return true, if not return false. So now in our users control, we could actually just call these functions and see whether the user has a role or not and then if they don't redirect them away from the page and that's perfectly fine but we're going to be using gates and this allows us to define a certain logic in a, one place and this is just to stop us repeating ourselves. so let's say we wanted to create a check saying is the user a current admin so we could call our has role with the admin string everywhere in our controller where we need it but then what if we change our mind and we say we want to know whether they're admin or an author? We have to change that multiple times in the controller. So if we use a gate, all the logic is just in one place. So let's create the gate. So under app providers, we can see we already have an auth surface provider. And this is created by Laravel when we created the login system. So if we just open up the auth service provider and up the top, we want to bring in the gate facade. So that's under illuminate support facades gate. Now down in the boot method, this is where we can define our gates. So let's create one. So to do this, we just call the gate facade and we want to call the define method. Now the first parameter we need to pass in is the name of our gate. And you can call this whatever you like, just something that you can remember. So I'm just going to call this one edit users. And there's a second parameter, we pass in a closure. So let's pass in a closure, and we need to pass in the current user into that closure. And then inside of here, we can call our new methods on our user model. So we can say return this user that we've just passed in, and we want to see whether they has role, and we want to see whether they has the admin role. And we just close this gate off here. So we're saying here for the current logged in user to pass our edit users gate, 
they need to have a role of admin. So let's just put that gate in place now. So if we come over to our users controller under app, HTTP controllers, admin user controller, and then up at the top of the file, we just need to bring in the gate facade. So use gate. Then we're gonna come down to our edit method. And what we're gonna say is we're gonna say if the gate denies, so you can do denies or allows logic here on the gate. And we're gonna see if it denies our edit users gate that we just created. And if it does deny, we want to return a redirect and we want to redirect back to a root and we're just going to go back to the admin users index page. And you notice here on our gate, we passing in a user, the current logged in user. But when we're actually calling a gate, we're not passing it in. And the reason for this is because Laravel injects it automatically for us. So we don't need to pass the current logged in user every time we call our gate. Laravel will handle that for us so we don't need to worry about it. So basically what we're saying here now is we're saying, does our gate deny this current logged in user permission to edit our users? So it's going to call the gate and it's going to go into the gate and it's going to find our edit users gate and it's going to say, okay, does this current user has a role of admin? That's going to come over to the users model. It's going to come here and it's going to run our has role method. And it's going to say, so this current user, check its roles relationship. On the roles relationship, does it have the role of admin that we've passed in on the name column? And if it does, it will return true. If not, it will return false. So if they don't have it, this denies is going to redirect back to the admin user's index page. If they do have it, it will just skip this and then carry on. So let's give this a try. So let's jump into our browser and now let's click edit. And you see we get directed to the edit users page because we're currently logged in as an admin. So let's just log in as an author instead. So we'll log in as our author user and let's go over to let's go over to user management. And we can see we, we can see everything. And now if we try and click edit, we just get redirected back to the admin page. And that's because our gate is denying the user access because they do not have the admin role. They only have the author role. So this is a great way to give granular control over your controller. So you can say only certain methods, only certain users can do certain things. So that's good. So the author can see our users, uh, but they can't edit them. And we'll probably want to do the same for our delete method as well. So let's just quickly put that in place. So over in our auth service provider, if we just copy this gate, um, instead of edit, we'll call this delete users and everything else stays the same. We're going to check whether we've got an admin role and over in our user controller, we can copy this gate and then in our destroy method, does the gate deny access to our delete users gate? And if so, redirect back to the index page. So let's give this a try. Now, if we try and delete on a user, you can see it just redirects, but the user doesn't get deleted. So that's good, but let's say now our normal generic user, we did delete them first, so we'll rerun our seeders in the next video. But we don't want our generic user seeing this page at all, do we? So you might just be thinking, oh, I can create a gate and I can copy and paste it into each of the methods. And you could do that, but then we're just repeating a load of code. And you also might think, oh, maybe we can just put it in the constructor then. But since Laravel 5.3, the constructor doesn't have access to the session. And the reason for this is because all the middleware needs to run first. So what we can do is we can put a gate in our middleware. And what we can do, we can create a gate to say, does the user have permission to view anything within this controller? So in the next video, let's create that middleware and create a new gate for it.